morning, my health science biology students. Um, again, we had technical difficulties for sound. So what I did is I have my sound that I recorded on my phone. So I am going to now try and merge these two together and hopefully they sync up okay. But if not, you'll get a general idea. So what we did is I just used, since we're expanding on October the 5th, I used October the 5th document and uh, we're going from there and I just add October the 7th to it. So hopefully we can set these up and continue on. See how the COVID discussions are going. Most of them seem like they're going well. If you don't have a reply, what I want you to do is just add either more research or your own personal reflection from when you did it the first time. Um, so pretend that someone replied basically or answer what you learned personally because most of you have done these a week or two and since you've been thinking about it you may have um, you may have had more insight on what you did initially because you were focusing on it. Um, okay, so the speaker volume, but it says I've got speakers. Why is it not capturing it? It's okay, I've only got three students left anyway, so they're gone. Okay, let's just continue on, and uh, I will have to do an overlay. Um, did anyone show you how to validate your, your online, um, your COVID proof yet? Have you been shown that? to your Blackboard, yeah, it's right on the portal. And you log into the portal, and you don't actually have to have it printed out at this time if you don't have access to a printer. If you don't have access to a printer, that's okay too. Um, you just have to go here to submit your, your declaration form and go through and give the information. And it sounds like what they're gonna do is do random tests, uh, random checking. So you give your phone number and it sounds like they're going to text you and you just have to submit the form, but I don't know. Anyway, do it when you can. You have to have it done by the 18th. If you haven't been vaccinated yet, get it vaccinated. Okay, good. Let's get on to, so as I said, I'm working from the October 5th document because we're pretty much doing the same thing. We are, oh, I finished the test. The test has 33 points on it. Um, and there's only one written question because I turned the other written question into a choose the correct statements about because that's easier for me to mark. Um, and so there's only one written question and it has choice. So either do pair A or pair B is what it basically says. And add detail for it. I think it's a three or four mark question. So make sure you add quite a bit of detail. Reading week next week. Good. Okay. When I left you last, we went quite quickly through the thyroid hormones. So let's relook at the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland has two types of tissue. Um, follicular tissue, which is follicle-like, and parafollicular tissue. And para means around. So parafollicular tissue is the tissue that's around the tissue. So thyroid gland, here we go. Just to look at it so you know you're aware of what the tissue looks like. Oh. Where is it at then? There it is. 
The follicles are small clusters around the central cavity and they produce the follicle, the, the T3 and the T4. Then you have the parafollicle cells and they are the ones that produce calcitonin. So, if we look at it, okay, so I can see that to match up. So, when we look at The hormone from the follicles are T, T3, and T4. And they target the body cells. And basically they increase metabolism. Okay, so that's growth, that's energy uptake, stuff like that. Then the parafollicular produce calcitonin and calcitonin will target the bones and teeth mainly the bones and or remember how we talked did we talk yeah we talked about osteoclasts and osteoblasts so osteoblasts build so what calcitonin does is stimulate the um stimulates the osteoblasts to produce more um, osteoblasts to produce more bone cells. Oh, there's a stapler in here. That's important. There we go. Okay. So, the increase is... The way I remember calcitonin is it puts calci calcium into your bones. So it will remove blood calcium and store it in into your bones. So this is a good way to have a storage. Now, if you have thyroid issues, such as an underactive thyroid, sometimes it even affects your um, calcitonin, it affects the paracellular or parafollicular cells. So often people with thyroid issues have bone issues in their older age, such as osteopor osteoporosis, no, osteoporosis, okay? Now, when we look at calcium, oh, let's do this first and then we'll come back to calcium. So there is thyroid, a thyroid um, feedback loop. There's a little video at the bottom that helps explain it. And let's see if we got sound this way. Stress and illness make us annoyed and cranky. When we're not Yeah. 
you see how that all goes around in terms of a negative feedback loop. The hypothalamus can detect the amount of T3 and T4. So if there is a large amount of T3 and T4, and the fact that your body is not making it properly, or not using it properly, it will tell the hypothalamus to stop the production and then have that negative feedback. So since the hypothalamus releases thyroid, thyrotropin releasing hormone, it will stop that. And then that will stop the thyroid stimulating hormone, which will stop the release of thyroid gland making more hormone. So this is a way of keeping everything in a balance. This system of hormones works a little like cruise control in a car works to maintain the speed set by the driver. When the car's speed drops below the desired speed, the car's speedometer computer sends a signal to the car's throttle, telling it that the car needs to increase its speed. The throttle opens wider to allow more fuel to reach the car's engine, and the car's speed increases. When the set speed is reached, the system shuts off. In both Graves and Hashimoto's, though, Okay, I wanted to show you this video just to show you the review of the thyroid gland. We don't need to look at the detail of the Graves' disease. Is um, a dis uh, Hashimoto's is a disease where your antibody attacks your thyroid, so your thyroid uh, doesn't produce and you become underactive. And then Graves is you are overactive. There's a really interesting video in the textbook that talks about the nuclear reactor accident. Because it will make things radioactive, and including then the iodine will pick up your radioactivity will be picked up by your thyroid gland, and often you end up with a destroyed thyroid, which will then affect your, um, your metabolism. And one of the reasons why there was a thyroid uh, in 83, 1983, there was Chernobyl. I don't know if you heard about Chernobyl. Chernobyl is a nuclear power plant that basically overheated and released a lot of radio, radio, radioactivity. Then countries around it, especially poorer countries like the Ukraine, have very bad, uh, very high incidence of thyroid problems because of the radioactivity. Okay, very sensitive. Good, so that is the way the thyroid gland works. Um, it, the textbook goes into some disorders about the thyroid, but I'm not going to, if you want, they're interesting to read because thyroid disease is so common in North America, but it's a good way to show how the feedback, if you interrupt the feedback system, you'll have a disease that it's not going to be tested on, okay? So when we look at the thyroid, there is that feedback loop. And this is a beautiful example of some nice, crazy stuff that all sounds the same. Thyrotropin releasing hormone, anything with releasing or inhibiting, usually comes from the hypothalamus. Then the hypothalamus will stimulate the pituitary gland, which will release thyroid stimulating hormone, and that's the hormone that stimulates the thyroid gland. Then the thyroid gland will then be um, stimulated to produce which increases metabolism mainly. And that's actually quite a, a complicated process, although it sounds very good. Okay. Then that is one set of hormones. The second set of hormones is calcitonin. And calcitonin is used to regulate calcium. Calcitonin is produced by the parathyroid cells of the thyroid, or sorry, parafollicular cells of the thyroid. And its role as helping blood calcium levels by stimulating the movement of calcium into bone. So I just remember into bones calcitonin in. It's got the word in and it's actually kind of got the O N of bone in it. I know it's sometimes you gotta go hard. Go far to get a, a way to remember things. Okay? Parathyroid. And then there is another gland, the parathyroid gland. The parathyroid gland is behind the thyroid gland. And it, they talk about it, but they don't show it here. Um, oh, we showed it in the beginning section. The parathyroid gland 
has releases, I love the name of this one, parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone does the opposite action of calcitonin. So here's a good way that calcium is regulated. The parathyroid hormone secretes parathyroid, sorry, yeah, parathyroid gland secretes parathyroid hormone which will break down bones or stimulate the osteoclasts to release calcium back into the blood. So then you have calcium in the blood, okay? So it's another good example of homeostasis being regulated by two different hormones. So calcium levels is regulated by two opposing hormones. List the hormones and the reactions. So calcitonin removes calcium from the blood and stores it in the bone. And then parathyroid hormone um, stimulates breakdown of bone and places it into the blood, restoring the calcium level. Okay, so again, it's a back and forth process. And it's regulated by two different glands and two different hormones. So in a perfect world, one balances the other. One. The adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are confusing in the fact that there are different levels of the adrenal gland, different tissue of the adrenal gland. So let's look at the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland is a gland on top of the kidneys. So it's in the abdomen and there are glands on top of the kidneys and they produce quite a few hormones. The, and there's different levels to the adrenal gland. If you were to dissect it apart, you have the medulla in the middle and then you have the cortex. Now medulla is just a nice general middle word and cortex is a nice outer word. So. Um, the medulla is responsible for the fight or flight catecholamines or neurotransmitters and the cortex is responsible for anything that's got cortico in it. Now the cortex has different zones, don't worry about the different zones, but there are four zones, or three zones, and the zones do different things. Okay. So, if we were to describe the adrenal gland, the adrenal gland is located on top of the kidneys. Describe the location of the adrenal glands. Located on top of the kidneys. In the abdomen. Okay. Um, has two layers, the middle medulla and the outer cortex. Okay. When we look at the cortex, the cortex are the ones, notice, well, they don't all have cortico in them. Mineral corticoids, glucocorticoids, and androgens. So if we look at them, The mineral corticoids, an example of that is aldosterone. So if you think about a mineral corticoid controls, it doesn't actually control minerals, it controls water um, absorption. And aldosterone will increase the amount of water taken up by the kidney. Then you have glucocorticoids and glucocorticoids will regulate glucose and an example of that is cortisol and then androgens will stimulate um, usually masculinity be 
because androgens are precursors to uh, testosterone. And this is why um, older women, once their, their ovaries have stopped producing estrogen, they get beards um, and their hair becomes more prominent because there's always testosterone in a male, female body, just like there's estrogen in a male body, but the main hormone overrides it. So in females, there's a small amount of testosterone, but there's a large amount of estrogen. As women go through menopause at an older age, they decrease the amount of estrogen being made, so that's when the testosterone becomes more prominent, and old ladies get mustaches and beards because of testosterone is a secondary sex characteristic in males, which are hairy bodies and beards. There you go. That's why old ladies get beards. Okay. Now again, this is another horrible example of things you just have to kind of memorize or associate with each other. The hormones produced are generally um, corticosteroids. So let's make a summary table. So your mineral corticoids such as aldosterone, they basically target the kidney. And they will increase water absorption. Okay, let's, let, okay, let's do it. Yeah, well, the salt is sodium. So the target is the kidney, and it will increase the reabsorption, reabsorption of sodium, which is the salt, right? If you move sodium, you've created a concentration gradient, water will follow. Good, so this way you can put them together. Mineral corticoid, salt is a mineral. Move salt, water follows. The water organ is kidneys. Okay, does that kind of give you a, a way to put it together? Very good. Now, the glucocorticoids target, glucocorticoids target the what does the textbook actually say? Oh, let's go here. Control the rate of metabolism of proteins, fats, and sugars. And so they will increase the amount of glucose and fatty acids in the body. So you may have heard of cortisol as the stress hormone. And this is one of the discussions about if you, that now that humans are stressed by non-life-threatening things, the adrenal glands will produce a lot of glucocorticoids such as cortisol and then the body is wanting to produce more glucose so this is why you're stressed and you get fat or you have extra glucose and you um, you don't maintain a healthy weight balance let's put that in a more politically correct way and then because you've got all these glucocorticoids it can suppress the immune system and that will um, also result in anti-inflammatory issues. So this is why stress can have extra complications. That's more of interest than for um, um, actual testing. So glucocorticoids will target, it targets um, protein and fat source. And that will increase the metabolism of fat and protein. Which can also have anti-inflammatory, or can have inflammatory results because you've, you've decreased the anti-inflammatory process. Good. Now, androgens are produced by the adrenal gland and they will target estrogen or testosterone um, receptors. Oops, wrong one. What did I just do? Undo, 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 undo. There we go. Wrong level. Did I tell you that I'm going for new glasses next week? I'm so excited because the little bubble's gone in my eye almost, so 
Hopefully I can see and the patch goes away and I have two eyes again. Because this isn't a fun game anymore. Well, it was until the sound went down, but whatever. Um, there we go. So, we have... That can produce hairs. Um, and also, sometimes there's aggression. So, what all does it say here? Female converts the sex hormones into an estrogen. Eh, yeah, produces estrogen. Anyway, androgens are, this, you may know the word androgynous is sort of a, a male, fe like a, not a true male or not a true female, well, not showing a true male side or a true, it's kind of like an ambiguous term. Anyway, androgens will produce hormones that um, can be converted into sex hormones. Okay. Let's do that. So that's not testosterone, but the receptors. And that converted into sex hormones. Again, that can add to, in males, too much androgen will turn into estrogen and give man boobs, gynecomastia, which is a cool word. Okay. Good. Um, flow chart. Let's do the medulla, and then we've already done the pancreas, right? So once we've done the medulla, we can do a little activity. The medulla has what are called catecholamines. So they're not true hormones, even though they are hormones. They're not true hormones. They're catecholamines because they act more as um, neuroreceptors. So catecholamines, or, or epinephrine and norepinephrine, used to be called, epinephrine used to be called adrenaline. And in the, either in the British people or the States, it's called adrenaline still. But this is the stress receptors, and this is the ones that will produce the fight or flight response. So they will act, they will cause a rapid action in the body in stressful situations. And they are activated by the sympathetic nervous system. So let's just summarize that in the target. Increased heart rate, rapid breathing. Cannot cross, they bind to the surface of the cells and they activate. Yeah. So they have various body, various parts in the body. And the action, um, I'm just going to put fight or flight because it's basically increases the activity. So that increases health, heart rate and breathing. Okay, that was quite a bit of um, detail. As a little review, down your endocrine cards. So you did chapter one. I have no one online anymore. <laughs> That's just too funny. So if you go to page two of the diagram, okay, if you want to change pages, you just click up here and you can go to page two. The page two has the adrenal glands to go through it. Oh, we didn't go all the way back to the, the hypothalamus, did we? Okay. So give it a shot. Again, you've got your hypothalamus, starts at the hypothalamus, then you have the pituitary, then you have the adrenal cortex. Did I do that or did someone else do that? Whatever, your adrenal cortex. Okay, and then put in your hormones and put in your actions. It's kind of confusing, because this is a confusing topic. Take, uh, let's take 10 minutes to do it and a five minute break, and then we will, at, at 10.30, we'll spend the last 20 minutes reviewing, okay? And if you don't, if that's too, yeah, let's do that. Good.
keep it going. And I have no way to check if my sound is recording. Oh, there's thinking. If one of you wouldn't mind logging in and seeing, but I have no idea if the sound is actually working. But then I'd have to, because I now, now the microphone is lit up properly, but it was lit up properly before, but now it's green and not purple. So if you could do that, that would be great. Uh, but everyone's logged out and gone home, probably very frustrated. Understandable. And now I have to spend tonight merging these together. All I notice is you're the only one in the room. Yeah, you're the only one. I'm not even in the room. I'm in the room. Okay. But if you go in the room, can you hear me? If I'm talking here, can you hear me as I talk? Okay. Well, then that at least tells me that I need to keep recording. Oh, I'm not even in the room anymore. No, I'm there, but obviously, and my, it shows my mic's on, and it shows that I'm working. No, it, show, it shows that you're here, you're now joining. There, Danielle, you've now joined. Can, begin, but can you hear me over the, the online mic as opposed to the other? Hmm? No. This sucks. And uh, luckily I've got a meeting today. Ooh, I'm gonna spew at this meeting. There's nothing. I don't understand why it works and then it doesn't work. Why? What are they doing that stops it from working? Increases 
So we're good. That one was kind of, yeah. I have a question. Yes, Haley. What chapter is the, the statement question from? What statement? Like you said that there was like pick the correct statements instead of getting rid of. Oh, you know how, yeah, um, if you look up here, I talked about how, um, without actually giving you the answer. Or just like one. Let's go with the fact that this assignment, the feedback glucose levels and pancreas, it, you may want to do that before the exam. Okay. How about that as the not yeah, telling you? Because <laughs> usually that's a big, you know, feedback loops and then... Yeah. Yeah. And I don't really care when you get that assignment in because I'm so far behind in my marking. I probably won't get that till next weekend. Um, but it's very important you do that assignment. Well, it will be an assist. It would be helpful to you on the exam to do that assignment before the test. How about that for not actually telling you anything? Is the exam more heavy towards like chapter 9, 10, or 7, or is it all fairly? They're all fairly mapped out. With the exception of there's a few more questions on hair than anything else. There's five points on hair, and I thought, hmm, which question should I remove? And I thought, oh, they're all good ones. So. <laughs> okay. Five points on hair. Uh, so yeah, they're all they're all different. They're all evenly dispersed. Should we be able to put the organ systems in all their functions, or is it only like because you had one question that was like all the on the reading guide, like every single? Well, hopefully you know most of the main organs in the organ system, right? Like the yeah. so if there's one that you're not aware of, so yeah, you should be able. If I give you an organ, you should be able to put it in an organ system. Okay, no, it was like that. It was more like all the functions. No, the not the functions because the functions we will get into more detail when we get into that chapter. That was sort of mainly the introduce the the organs, and then we'll talk about the functions when we get to that chapter. Okay. Do we need I know that's a lot of and it's a lot of material but if you know the gen well no I just know your know what organ goes in what organ system if you want to any of you answers directly yeah um, Haley you had another question yeah I did oh yeah um the body cavities yes should we know those know those and know what organs are in the body cavities you don't have to label a diagram. Okay. I took it out because I couldn't find a nice diagram. <laughs> and I, then you said for cellular respiration that we should know what the formula looks like, correct? Yes. Okay. Oh, I took that question out too because I did that in a class with you. I was going to have you discuss with me the, that was another question. I initially had five written questions. Um, how the different body systems were used in cellular respiration. I thought that's not a thinking question. Because the whole idea of written question is give you questions that you need to think and think of stuff in a new way. So I'm actually testing your application and synthesis, not did you pay attention. So I took that question out. So, yeah, you don't need to know it now because I took it out last night going, that will be brutal to mark. <laughs> Unless it was so big. So I have, I have a question similar to that, like that, but I've now made it more specific. And there's actually option as to which body systems, either this one or this one or this one or this one. Okay. You guys seem either so overwhelmed with everything that's going. Well, your test start opens tomorrow, so. Yes. What's your name? Tanisha. Tanisha. Yes, Tanisha. Um, will there be lots of like the matching questions? No. Well, you're matching structures of the hair diagram. That's the only, I think. I think that's the only one. And you need to know your body cavities and what organs in your body cavities. But that's a multiple answer question. I don't know, I don't remember. That was so yesterday. I was excited to have five friends in the panel, I find it way better than I do with multiple choice. Some people do, 
but if you're wrong, it's really hard to assign marks to. Uh, and and because I'm way behind in my marking, well, not way behind, but there's a lot, so yeah. And the multiple answer questions are trickier to answer because you have to look and make sure you pay attention to words because sometimes I could like put increase instead of decrease or if it comes from a different part, put like delta instead of alpha or something to that effect. So read to yourself out loud. I always second guess myself. Yeah, don't. Could you go back and see when you changed your answers, did you change any of them to correct answers? No. So then don't change your answers. <laughs> I don't know what was the one with the lost down, I think if you watch the video, you're sitting like this, it's like, I don't know, and I was like, I think it's this, and I'm like, no, it has to be this, and I'm like, no, it's this, and I was like, it has to be that, Well, it actually shows what question you worked on at what time. Oh, there's all sorts of stats I could find on those if I really wanted to spend hours watching you. Um, it tells you at what time you answered what question, so if you're looking flustered, I could tell what question. Um, plus, a lot of people were having problem with timing, and written questions usually take longer to write. So, yeah. I know, I did the test so fast, I was like, walked up my stairs, I was like, no, I was like, I failed it. <laughs> and did you? No. <laughs> whether you can or you can't, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're correct. That's, yeah. Okay. So, the epithelial, epithelial tissues, Yeah. Epithelial is not adipose. That's kind of scary. Oh, but <laughs> let's do some. There are four types, types of, of tissues. Yes. What are the four types of tissues? Epithelial, connective, cardiac, and skeletal. Close. Epithelial, connective, muscle, and nerves. Nerves. And then in your muscles, you've got cardiac, skeletal, and smooth. Yes. Your nerves, you have neurons, neurons and neuroglia. And neurons are the excitable tissue, and neuroglia support and protect. Yes. So that's really, because we have a whole chapter on the neuron system, it'll just be a basic function in the nerve system. Um, yeah, I think I took out the matching question with the parts of the nerve, but I may not have. The, one of the problems you'll realize is once you get into 102, the, the courses are slightly the same but slightly different in levels. Because yeah. we're going to do the exact same thing again in 102 but add another layer to it. So when I'm doing the same at the same time, I get a little confused. That's wow. There's not going to be any questions like here's a picture of a cell, what kind of cell is it? Mm -mm. Okay. No. I just showed you that because some of you will go on to do histology. And also, to, to me, sometimes it makes more sense if you see it, yeah. such as epithelial tissue. So you've got your squamish, which are flat, and you've got your cuboidal. And, and another one, too, that explains better with looking at it is your transitional, how the top layer is smaller and then the bottom layer is bigger because it, it transitions or changes. And that adds to when you see it adds more stretch and more give to it. So no, there's no identify this picture. That's too mean. Unless I make it really obvious and then that's too obvious. Yeah. So make sure you know your, your connective tissues and your functions of your connective tissues. And yeah, there's a lot of material in this again. A lot. Good. Any more? Because I can. Oh, what was the name of that game? There's a game page. It's really cool. For.
the main categories, of, there's four categories and then there's sub three, three categories, fibrous, fluid, and solid. And then in your fibrous, you have dense, loose, fluid, you have bone, no, blood and lymph, solid, you have bone and cartilage. And adipose, where does adipose fit? Matrix? It's a solid. No. Adipose is usually um, a... I actually don't see it on my reading guys. Okay, adipose, it's, it's usually connected, with, it's usually stuck with loose, um, loose, da loose, so it would go in the fibrous, because it's a type of loose tissue. It's similar to loose, if that makes sense. Uh, PurposeGames.com. Really, I don't, I was wearing, well, this eye, because of the way they put the band around my eye to reinforce it, it made it more oblong, so I will probably need to just upgrade the thing, because I can see, if I hold my hand this close to my face, it focuses, and if I take my glasses and my reading glasses and hold them together, I can see different screens, so I'm hoping, I'm so hoping, it's going to be good, it's going to happen. It's gonna happen. I'm gonna be able to see and I'll be very happy. I hope I will anyway. Um, there is a game called, or a, a web page called Purpose Games. Skin Anatomy, there we go. You can play this one. And then it's kind of straightforward. You just click on it and then you click start now. But that's not the one I want. Oh, up here, root hair. Root hair is... Hypodermis is here. Hypo is below. This one's tricky because there's so many buttons. Hypodermis. The dermis is the middle layer. Adipose is the fatty stuff down here. Oh, I'm good so far. Nope. Adipose there. So that'll give you the anatomy of the skin to practice. Um, and although, and then as you're going through, make sure you pay attention to not only um, the names of the layers, but what's in the layers of skin. Yes. Can you put this link on the, the page for today? Of course I can. Muscles, muscles, muscles. It doesn't have hair. Parts of a horse, there's some good ones. I guess I could do a search. Anyway, that's a good one. So, what are our chapters? Integumentary system, endocrine system, What's the other system? Oh, tissues and, uh, tissues and systems. 
Tissues and systems. The system system. Yes. Um, is there a search? cavities. There we go. That's kind of cool. Let's put that one in there too. Good. Okay. I, I, I would like to help you review, but I don't want to overwhelm you because sometimes you get to a point where if I go through my brain, you know, I just... I just start saying words, and I'm up here doing the Charlie Brown wah, 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 teacher. Wah, wah. Are you good? Any questions? Yeah. Just hoping to make sure I understand. For the condensed, because the, the tissue is kind of confusing a little bit. For the condensed tissue, there's the seven types that we need to know, but they, they fall into the three categories. There's three categories and seven types. Okay, so we need to know the three categories and seven types on top of that. Yeah, so the three categories are fibrous. Solid and liquid. Fibrous are which category? Which ones go into fibrous? The adipose, dense. Okay. What is the function of adipose? Uh, it stores fat. What is the function of dense? Uh, it is like your tendons. Like your tendons and your ligaments. So you want strong, flexible but strong. Yeah. What's the function of loose? It's stretchy but also strong. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's stretchy and strong. What are the names of the two types of proteins in dense and loose tissue? Uh, one starts with an E, one starts with a C. Collagen and elastin. Collagen and elastin. Good. And don't mix those up with keratin, which is, where is keratin found? Keratin's found in the skin. Very good. And the hair. Okay. So that's fibrous. Then the next one is solid. What are our solids? Bone and cartilage. What's the function of bone? Movement. Support, movement, Action. structure. Calcium storage is another one, but that's so what you mean. It. That's a yeah. Uh, what's the structure of cartilage? It's strong, but it's a Compressible is the word you're looking for. Compressible, um, and the example of that is your cartilage at the end of your. Joints. Have any of you had wings since? Did you see the cartilage at the end? Did you point it out to the people you were eating with, or did you not I freak them out? You, you fed it to your dog. How sweet of you sharing it with your dog. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's fine. And and that yeah, don't give them the bones. But, and then did you break open the bone? Oh, wait, this isn't the bone unit. Sorry. When we get to the bone unit, you get to eat wings again because then you get to see the parts of the bone. I have a friend that brings well, but it needs to be uh, there all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I had a, a family live with me, and they had just immigrated from the Ukraine, and they ate everything. Like, and, and oh, no. It was amazing. No. Wings gross me out sometimes. I'm what we throw out, it is amazing what others will eat, um, which just shows we're a very wasteful society. Um, okay. Liquid. Liquid. Blood. Blood and lymph. What are the three cells in blood? Red, white, and platelets. Okay, what are the functions? Red is for transporting oxygen. White? Fight the immune system. Disease, yeah, and platelets? Clotting. Okay, what is lymph? Pardon me? It drains into the cardiovascular. What the lymph does is it picks up extra fluid that the cardiovascular system doesn't. You've got no one around you. You can leave your mask off for that wee bit. <laughs> I know you want to be overly protective, but there's enough space. We're okay. Um, it drains into the... What it does is it picks up extra fluid. And it's also... So it's fluid control and also immune system, which is enough for now. Okay, what are the, oh, oh, can you do the 11 system? Oh, are we done? Carl, uh, yes, we're done our connective tissue. That was seven. Okay. And I think that's a matching question, or it's multiple choice. Which of the, this is that, or the example of this is that. Okay. Good. Oh, do we need to know the levels of organization? That was one of them. Um... 
wasn't that last chapter? I thought it was on this one. It's just added the Adam and Ball and Ball. List the levels of organization in order from smallest to largest complexity. Give examples. Okay. Adam. Groups of atoms work together to a molecule. Groups of molecules work together to form a cell. Groups of cells work together to form tissue. Groups of tissue work together to form organs. Groups of organs work together to form organ systems. Groups of organ systems work together to form an organism. Uh, oh, that would be a really good question. I should put that one in. Put those in order. Just because I'm done writing the test doesn't mean I can't add to the test. I got to You're 9 recording, right? <laughs> I got to 9 a.m. But will anyone listen to the recording at this time point? Don't you shut off. By, do you even listen to the recordings? No, because you're here. Listening to myself while the recording is torture. <laughs> if that question is giving you on the test, I'm going to listen to the recording. Don't you should be a recorder lesson because Well, what I've got is I've got my, oh, is this dead? What's going on here? Am I out of battery? No, I'm on low power, so we're good. I've killed the battery on my phone, though. Um, so now what I do is I have to take and put the sound onto, so I've captured the screen, so then i got to sync them up and I will, um, I've got a, a program called Screencast-O-Matic, I need to run them at both the same time and hopefully record it. When I'm going to do that, find that hour of my life, I don't know, but it'll happen. Okay, I think we're done. We're done? Make sure you feel confident when writing the test. Take the time if you need to. It's, you got till Saturday at 9 a.m. 9 p.m. So don't rush it is what I'm saying. How long do we have to write an hour and a half? Before? You got an hour and a half. Most of you will be done in about 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But some of you need to take the time. And I, and I, I think, I have no idea how many English second language learners there are in this program because you guys are all just eyes and masks. That's all you are. Well then don't second guess yourself.